challenges and all these issues when you propose to launch a uh, thousand and maybe tens of thousands small non-traceable objects into Earth orbit where they can really uh, will produce additional harm to other operational spacecraft. Thank you. Okay, so the answer to that is we have absolutely no intention of releasing them into low Earth orbit. That would just be crazy. So the places, uh, the KICKSAT was chosen to go into a very careful orbit below the International Space Station, and there was a lot of modeling done to model the re-entry time and how long everything would be in orbit. And the mission was designed to fail safe from the beginning. So for example, when the deployment failed, for example, the QTAP automatically came in less than 30 days. So the whole mission was designed to fail safe, and that would be the case for all the missions that we do. We're interested in interplanetary exploration. We're not interested in doing this in Leo. Uh, so we want to go to the Moon, we want to go to Mars, Venus, whatever. We have no interest in doing this in Leo. The second thing is that uh, the thin film spacecraft have been designed to be radar reflective. That's why they're bigger, they're metalized, they will show off on space space radars. So that when we do do a few low Earth orbit tests, and they will be very low altitude, because we might want to test the uh, entry, descent, and landing system, for example, which we should re-enter to the surface of the Earth, they'll do so safely. So as I said, no shortcuts, we're not trying to do anything bad. Everything is modeled properly by people like Lockheed and all that kind of stuff. You know, we're doing this responsibly because we won't be allowed to do it if we don't. Thank you, okay, thank you very much. And the uh, last presentation is something which is really like a bird of child. This is a presentation uh, for what I understand the amateur community was waiting since the Sputnik 1957 to show to the professionals that they are good, they are even better, and we have to say the truth, it will be a hosted payload, it will be a not a CubeSat on the geostationary orbit, because after then you will be die here if we will say that the amateur community was able to send the CubeSat to the geostationary orbit, but still I am happy to present Graham Shivil, who will, on behalf of Qatarsat, who ask very kindly to excuse because they have a very busy schedule and they were not able to come. Graham, as a Yaru Region 1 satellite coordinator, is going to present the first amateur satellite band GSO satellite. Graham, microphone is yours. Thank I'm you. only kindly asking our guests are waiting. Five minutes. Five minutes, please. Yeah, okay. Um, good evening. I know it's an old saying, but I'm the only thing that stands between us, you and I, and the bar, so I will make it quick. Um, how, who, who, who here would like eight and a quarter megahertz new spectrum? Anybody want to do that? Yeah, okay. Uh, we're going to get it. Uh, as uh, Attila has said, um, We've been given the opportunity to have a hosted payload on a geostationary uh, direct broadcasting spacecraft called a Sailhat Sat 2, which is being organized from Doha in the Arabian Gulf and being run by, well, the project is being overseen by the uh, Qatari Amateur Radio Society, to whom we're obviously very grateful. Um, we're going to have two transponders uh, covering the visible Earth, obviously like any other geostationary satellite, that's one third of the Earth. Uh, here are the high level requirements, uh, fairly straightforward to provide communication. Uh, the, there are two transponders, one's a narrow band one, only 250 kilohertz, that will enable about 100 uh, uh, users, uh, sorry, 100 c uh, contacts to be operating at the same time. Again, this eight and a quarter megahertz or, uh, is not going to need uh, a deep space network sat uh, a ground station. Like, as you, would, as you know, radio amateurs like to do things fairly cheaply. What we believe, the, the link budget, which you'll see a bit in a, in a minute or so, um, 60 centimeter dish, 
a converted LMB, or an unconverted LMB, uh, an SDR, one of these $9 SDRs, and your laptop, and you can receive, you'll be able to receive signals. The transmitter will uh, also be relatively cheap as well. This is the coverage from 26 degrees east. Um, that the red line, I think, is a five degree elevation. Um, uh, I apologize to our American friends in the audience, <coughs> uh, but uh, we can't be uh, choosers, can we? Um, compared with existing AMSAT missions, which have generally been to LEO, we've done a number of, uh, of, uh, of missions to, uh, uh, to a GTO, uh, but generally they've been to LEO. This one, of course, takes us to the geostationary um, point uh, for the very first time. It says there are 90 simultaneous voice transmissions, 180 users. The wideband uh, uh, transponder is intended for digital video, digital spread spectrum, stuff that's new, certainly in the amateur radio field. Uh, they looked at uh, different frequency selections, LS or uh, S um, and others. Um, and we come down to uh, L band, uh, sorry, S band uplink and X band downlink. So that the uplink will be on 2.4 and the downlink will be on 10.45. Um, various reasons for that, um, as you can see, um, but primarily that required the least changes on the spacecraft. Um, thank you. Uh, it's, as it says there, we'll be using right hand circular polarization for the S band uplink and linear polarization for the downlinks. Technical solutions, they are the frequencies that we're using. We've, I don't think they've yet filed, have they? I'm not sure, I think it's in process. Everything is in absolute oh. order, even the <laughs> core. Am, am I the first presenter that it's has been able to- Not only, including to coordination requests. They have an easy life. This amateur satellite service at the GSO, subject of coordination but not a cost recovery fee, because it will be 25,000, but they have a okay. date of protection which can dream only the Intelsat one in 1963, that they are the first in the band, subject of coordination, that's why they have an absolute zero, not one, zero, no in, the, in the order, a date of protection. Thank you for that update. Um, so yes, uh, right-hand circular polarization on the uplinks and uh, the two transponder downlinks, one's vertical and one's horizontal linear polarization. Uh, you probably can't see very much from that, but th that slide uh, uh, aims to show you the polar diagram and the gain of the horn antennas that are going to be on board. Um, one detail here I rather like that the narrowband transponder is going to have an AGC function, which looks just like the AGC functions we put on LEO transponders in terms of attack time and delay time, decay time. Uh, that's, all of this is in your, uh, on your stick, so the block diagram is there. Um, target user uh, segments, it's talking about there, a 90 centimeter dish if you're in, a, in the rainforest in Brazil, 60 centimeters if you're nearer to the middle and 75 elsewhere. So really, really simple, it, will sh it should be really simple to use um, and no challenge for frequency coordination, no challenge for regulation, and I believe the launch date is late 2016. So for all the radio amateurs in the room, uh, those of you who will be in the coverage, I look forward to seeing you there. Thank you very much indeed, Attila, for the opportunity. Thank you, Graham, and start to tune your radios to the S-Band, <laughs> start to develop the antennas. Thank you, Graham, and, and I think it will be a great project and we didn't speak about emergency communication, etc., etc. If you see the service area, unbelievable, unbelievable for which can be used this, this communication system. Band planning. Uh, Band planning will be a big issue, but yeah. that's for tomorrow. Like each song has an end, also this symposium is coming to the end, and we are happy to invite to the podium uh, the ITU Radio Communication Director, Mr. François Aranci, who is in fact one and a half hour watching you from the last line, but we agreed that I will introduce him to the end. That's why he was so happy to see all of the coffee break presentation. Welcome, Mr. Aranci. Thank you very much, Attila. 
I'm always happy to see engineers working because uh, I've been doing that for nearly 35 years now. And um, it's really a pleasure to be uh, with you today. Um, I know uh, that this workshop or this symposium rather has been quite successful. You were 160 participants from 38 countries to attend in it. And I, I believe it's a sign of the importance of the new technology development that uh, small satellites are uh, now uh, underlining. Uh, not only we had people from many countries, but we had also um, people from the key uh, space agencies in the world and, and also people from uh, the Im important small satellite, the big small satellite companies <laughs> and administration regulators as well uh, that I, I want to uh, uh, thank for their participation. Um, as any uh, new technical approach, I would not say that it's a new technology, it's just a new approach which is using uh, the possibilities offered by technology and, and in particular by uh, the uh, possibility to launch smaller satellites much, much more easily than it was in the past. Um, the, uh, importance in this type of situation uh, should be given to the type of discussions that we have been or you have been having during these two days which associate all the stakeholders of um, this type of approaches um, so that we can collectively reflect on how can we build together an ecosystem which is sustainable in the long term. Um, I believe the role of, of ITU and UNOSA is in, in this respect is very important. Um, that we, we need to work together to ensure that what we are planning to do in the coming years is something that we'll still be able to plan to do in 10 or 20 years from now. And I think uh, the discussion has been quite encouraging in this respect. Um, we'll continue the work tomorrow for those who are interested in, in the workshop to make you uh, even more familiar with uh, our procedure that I'm sure Attila has, has described. You are certainly very anxious to practice that tomorrow. And uh, I'm, I'm sure you have understood that, and you will further understand that tomorrow, that these procedures are quite simple, actually. Um, and uh, once you have applied them, you, have, you are getting the international recognition for the system you are launching, and you are actually, you have the security also uh, for other systems to be recognized. So uh, let's continue to work together. Thank you for um, being here in Prague uh, these two days. And I would like to express my profound gratitude to uh, the Czech Republic government, the University of Prague, and to have hosted this meeting and made it such a successful event. Thank you very much for your contribution to this success. Uh, Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ancien. Now I would like to invite the Dean of Faculty, Professor Ripka, and also Professor Schimak as the Academia representation, and also Mr. Henry as a garant, garant of the symposium uh, to have some closing uh, points, if you wish, and after then, uh, we will continue. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you all for coming here. Well, the uh, main part is uh, closing, but I hope most of you stay 
overnight and attend the, 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 the program for tomorrow. And I just uh, invite everybody 